Hi everyone, welcome back. Well, I had to take a little bit of a break, uh, you know, under the uh, for the painting there, and I didn't take care of my palette. It dried up, so I'm resetting everything uh, this morning, <laughs> and going to do it again. Okay, so but one of the things I, I, you know, I've mentioned to you in other videos, one of the things, you know, some of us get locked in, and I did for a long time, and still do, get locked into doing specific things with our palettes, with our colors. And so one way I said that I used to break that habit every once in a while is I'll start a painting with one set of colors and then slowly through the painting add more colors to the palette so that it's constantly getting fresh and giving me new ideas and new looks and it really does work and so since I decided I came in this morning and I was looking at my horse and stuff here and I'm going to be doing the the white horse which you know in a lot of white uh, white face Herefords and stuff here so I want to be able to you know, change those colors again. One color to put out, which I just did here, is the medium white. This is a very warm color, okay? It is a very warm color. It is a value seven color. So I can use it in conjunction with whites, but really put that nice warmth up onto something. I'll show you. So I can take just a small flat here, like a little number six, and right where I'm gonna have that light, this is this is really the color that I want to come down like on the top up here by his mane right where it's hipping and you can see it's just a super warm color and it's a good what I call in in a lot of painting it's a good benchmark color like I say sometimes we will slide too cool we'll slide too warm we'll get into favorite colors we like and this is a uh, medium white is one reason why we make it it's a pre-mixed color now it's made from just a touch of black touch of yellow oxide and white to a value seven so if you don't have it you can make it but it's good to have that pre-mixed color out there to help you especially you know it's warm you know it's uh, it's up towards its highlight and it will help you get a whole nother look you know and i'm real close to it over here but It'll help you get a whole nother look. Now I can use that also up into my clouds, you know, when I come up here. So, you know, maybe add a little extender here. We're going to show you all different kinds of ways, but see, this will come up as a real nice evening warmth right up there. And it works right in conjunction with my lights, my whites here to help us really define a cloud as we're going to work this up here we'll give it a little lost edges just by tapping that right there a little too straight of a line there so i'll fix that but i'm going to show you this but the big thing here uh is to um you know is to keep your colors and if you have a problem like me sometimes you know always making the same colors from your palette add halfway through the painting add another color into your palette to help you change everything it's going to help me today okay so i noticed this morning when i was looking at it got so in here and i stopped right here i forgot to continue this uh, you know across here so and i wanted this to start sliding a little cooler so i'm gonna before i go work on the guys and start adding everything in there more details and more to the cows stuff here i want to finish up some of the not finish up but get this another stage here and as you notice uh, before i left the last video i told you this is just burnt sienna yellow and white and then the shadows over here burnt sienna you could use a little bit of blue a little bit of green and it's just simple block in all of that's going to change and that's all i did was just put in some movement but i need this if I'm gonna work on these guys here, I need this area right in here. And so we need to define that just a bit more. So let's come back in there. I wanna go slightly violet, so blue and my violet here. And I can even toss in some of this medium white. The yellow in it will help this tone down a bit. I want this to go slightly blue and also a little bit of grayness from that, uh, from that uh, burnt sienna there. We can add a little extender to this. This is just to help us find some of that color and see that's going to be pretty good in there i want to put this little mesa in the beginning of it here and again i want this we're building this we're building this in some layers and stuff like that so we're going to uh, you know just soften this out now i might want to add a little bit more uh let's just say visual interest here not too much come between there so it's not just a straight line there and uh, then let's continue on here so I'll just paint into this guy a little bit 
continue on and let that mesa fall down over here slightly into the violets there like that and then we break that up now one thing to break it up is you can add the atmospherics of your light blue which is that aqua kind of color so that always helps in when you're establishing depth a little bit of your sky colors back up into there will help you establish some of the depth and we want to just keep this soft right now and uh, maybe a little lighter warmer all this together just all good grays just use this to kind of break up some of these colors here and again I'm going to do this multiple times so you know this is gonna it's gonna get a lot of interest when it's all finally done but I don't want to have it all now I need to have a little bit more of it here to uh, to show some distance and stuff here into the painting but I don't need to to have uh, you know a tremendous amount of stuff going on quite yet let's lighten maybe warm maybe just a little gray or down through here this will be a I'm going to look for a color and this is like what I told you we're going to paint right up into the guy a little bit blur the edges don't paint perfect edges we want to blur the edges right now but I'm going to paint right up towards this uh, towards my our, my writers here and I use the brush flat like this to create those of you that paint landscapes with me and you know if you're a landscape painter you don't care for westerns give them a try sometime because they're a lot of fun but the westerns are really great because you're going to set a lot of depth and so you got to kind of figure out your colors and your coloring here let's get a little green and burnt sienna but you got to figure out your coloring here and how you're going to approach this and you know so you get some depth and some interest but you know and you, and also your calligraphy of your brush you know western is a little different than uh you know what it is in say doing just a straight landscape because you've got to figure out the brush movement like here if i if i didn't have this here i might put even more interest into that very back but since i've got all these these guys up here in the front and stuff that i want to do i have to control my calligraphy a little bit more and I like to have a paper towel in my hand, just a touch of water in it to help soften off edges. That's what I'm looking for. Let's put a bit of that color, maybe in a couple of strong verticals here to help give that uh, ridge line there a look. We'll build that up even more. I want some of that nice warmth back here. So let's build that for a second. A little yellow, a little yellow and a little burnt sienna, a little bit of red. Some medium white would be a good color in there. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's pretty good. Drag some of that through here into this area of this little mesa, this plateau here, there. And uh, let's put a touch of that nice warmth right down in here. It's a bit shadowy, so we could get some of that nice light Maybe even a medium white, a little yellow, a little yellow oxide here. Model it. Don't mix it up real well. Model it in your brush. And we'll hit that just a bit more there. And we'll see. This will dry down, so we'll take a look at it there to see, you know, what kind of interest that's going to have there. But, um, you know, and you can pull some of that a little further forward here. Just a touch of it will keep that nice warmth coming through here. Now that'll dry down. So we'll look at it after it dries down. You also have that beautiful, I put out just a touch more of that raw sienna, that beautiful Australian sienna in there that will, um, you know, stay, uh, that'll look pretty nice, I think, here. We'll break up these edges here. Here, just break up some of those edges. If I feel an edge is too powerful, I just drag over it and break it up here. Okay, so now this gives us a little bit more. Let's put a touch of that warmth in through here. Don't want to go too warm because they're coming over towards the shadows here. But just give the idea of that mesa continuing on there. And 
we'll come back. I, I like this exchange right back in here. We want to maybe pull that up a bit more. So, and I, so I'm going to go through my painting here and, you know, when I'm doing something like this and I'm really enjoying the painting, I don't just like work on one specific area and stuff. I jump around and it's something that I don't always say to do, but when I'm, because you can forget about certain areas and stuff, but I do love to jump around a bit sometimes when I'm doing a casual painting like this, because this will help me, um, you know, refine all the areas at once and one color affects another color. So I'm going to, lighten this maybe blue this up just a bit now when you're with acrylics you got to remember that they're going to dry a little darker so you have to put it on quite a bit lighter because it's going to dry quite a bit darker but see how just putting that in see how that changes that whole back mountain back there so if i want this back mountain to show up a little bit more let's go with a little bit of blue and a little bit of that violet it here and let's just darken that down just a bit here that might be too much here because it's causing too much of a line I can even take a little open medium something to thin it out a little open medium a little extender or something we'll thin that out and I'll just brush along it here and edges colors values edges are so very important so see I'll start to just tap into that color I don't want to destroy all its movement because it's that movement that gives it that interest back there. But see, now I'm watching this. I'm watching that. I'm stepping back on my brush now. I'm stepping, actually, I'm leaning back. You'll see me lean back all the time. Why? Wow, I like a good lean back chair. I'll lean back from it and start watching that edge as I start taking that back to see it start to get the effect that I want it to get. See? So now it's, it's pushed to the back, but yet it still has quite a bit of interest there. And maybe we're going to take some of this, and this might all be just a big old cloud that starts to cover up this whole area, which you don't see me do too much, you know, cloud, you know, cross over clouds over um, areas and stuff, but it is really nice to do that every once in a while. We'll add a little open medium, and I'm just doing this dry. I'm doing a technique that's developed by the Dutch that's called scumbling. And I'm just scumbling light, light color over the base here. And it, you can see it gets a lot of interest there and um, works really well. Now, I might, that's drying down right here. I might want just a touch more. It might have to be just a touch more blue, but I don't want a sharp edge there. I want it kind of blurry, but you can kind of pick up some of that, uh, that color, that darker color of the mountain there let's take a bit of our grays and our blues maybe a touch of our violets into this blue and the violet color here so I'll work up there in the sky I'll jump down to the mesa to the hills and stuff here as I work to start to develop this painting a little bit I don't want to go too long here with one color but I want to develop that nice shadowing up there maybe a bit of the light color into that. It's a little dark. Remember, it will dry a little darker. I like this violet cool color over here. And I want to scumble this up into the sky here. I want this to come in front of this other layer of this light hitting back here. So the light, the sun is hitting this back here. But this little long kind of cloud there is up in shadow right there and let's put a touch of the light here right up in front so this is that's a little too blue how would you kill the blue you can kill blue and in, in any kind of burnt sienna or red even if you want to keep that evening gray to it that's better that evening gray kind of color to it is the red is nice it's a compliment to it it's almost a red orange and uh, we'll just pull that back so see you can work some of this shape some of this stuff up a little dry and that works and I want 
right, that's drying down. Boy, that light blue is drying down a lot more than I think. So I'm going to lighten it up just a bit more. I want some of that blue sky coming right through here. And because uh, I think that's a good reaction of the clouds to that sky. So I might even go a bit lighter and figure that out there. Here, let's go just a bit lighter here. And it's kind of fun. I, I hope you kind of enjoyed this way in which I'm filming, you know, filming this one without following any kind of inspiration. And now see how that, that see how that changes that makes that. What, what's that difference there? Made that look a little darker there. Why does it do that? Simultaneous contrast. And that's the thing that bites us. But it's kind of fun to film like this, paint like this and work this. And hopefully some of you, you know, that are looking for different ways to create and find your own looks might find creating this way uh like this is one of my favorite ways to create might find this uh you know more satisfying as an artist to create this way create your own kind of looks here so i'll carry that blue sky through just a bit more here and a little bit of light you could have it slightly more yellow over here or i can make that a little bit later here here, come in down that edge there, maybe a bit of it showing up here and there. This is really good to go out, catch that late evening or that early morning sky and take a look at some of the colors that happen there. It gives you a good idea how to paint something like this. And I would do it every day, not every evening, but definitely in the mornings. I watch every morning sky. So may want a little bit more of that blue and light over here. Brings that back up. Puts that back hill over there. Maybe a, a bit of it right up over here. So you see as I'm adding more colors and stuff into there, uh, it gets a little bit more interest. Now, see this is a little rough. I've got some good interest in there, but it's a little rough. It's not painted enough, if that makes sense. Um, for me, in other words, it's still too transparent. So we'll take a bit of the violets and the blues here and maybe gray that with some burnt sienna here. And I'll take some of this. This is going to be too dark, but I know it's going to be. So sometimes I'll go ahead and just put that on. And then what I'll do to get my interest and stuff back to that area is take like a light blue sky or another color here, lighter color, maybe even a bit of that warmth there, this lighter color and paint that into this, move it around in the shape of the mountain that I want here. And that puts those colors in there, see? It's filling it up a little bit more, a little bit more of a painting which is what I want, um, softer, lighter, grayer, blue here. I want this softer, lighter, grayer, blue right up by him, by his face here. This will all help him push forward when I paint his face there. Some of that blue, look for that to drag across here. That blue, that atmospheric, that causes everything to recede. And see, as I put that blue on there, look how his, how he comes forward. And that's what we want. We want some of that, that blue and stuff. Matter of fact, we can drop this down. Maybe drop this little mesa down a bit here. Drop it back down over here as well. Let some of that just disappear let's put a bit of light maybe a bit of that warmth right down through here just you know i, I just find the shapes of it here there we go and you know and i'll screw something up which i did there which is okay don't worry i am a professional <laughs> okay and i find my way through it so I'll destroy that mesa there, that little plateau there a bit, and I'll just go back and add that back in there. 
And again, adding it, taking some of this other color here, adding that into there, into little bits of this area here, little angle strokes. And we do have to remember our light source is coming from over there, so good shadows, but that helps quite a bit. That's a pretty little color back there that I can maybe use back in here a bit to help shadow that back mountain back a little bit further. And so you see, it's just all this development and stuff that we do here. Let's go slightly warmer. Let's come over here to this side, slightly warmer. Some of our raw sienna, some of that burnt sienna here. And uh, maybe a bit of our warmer uh, medium white here. That's kind of nice. Get that nice warmth. A little bit of yellow, raw sienna. Push some of that into this area here on that hill and it'll cross back through. I don't want this guy here to cut a tangent line, which is cut between the warm and cool. So I'm gonna want some of this warmth to come across here. And I've destroyed his face and stuff, so I get to redraw all that again. So we'll just add some of that across there. And you know, you may wanna take a bit of that cool Put a bit of that right in here on this shadow side of that one there. Okay. So you see it's a refining of it. A back and forth and refining of it. And I'm painting right on a dry mountain here. It doesn't need to be wet because the, the colors and stuff that I'm doing here are, uh, you know, they're, uh, everything's dry, but I'm putting it on a little bit transparent. and. I'm letting the dragging of it. I'm painting more with a tone than I am anything else. So, and that works pretty good that way. I'm going to uh, grab my three quarter inch brush here. And it has a little bit of paint left in it from yesterday. So I'll just rinse that real quick here. And then I'll put a bit of extender into it. Maybe even a little open medium. Let's take a dirty kind of a whitish color a little bit of violet in it right here and uh, let's come right back through here and i like the bigger brush i try when i'm doing the clouds you see i just pounce on this cloud now you'll see a hundred different ways in which i paint clouds and stuff in all of my videos let's just drag this one right up over that just a bit and uh, you'll see a hundred different ways in which I do them. Sometimes wet on wet, sometimes dry layers like this. And I like the dry layers. It's a different look. And I do like the wet on wet too. It's all a little different. Let's grab a little bit more white here. Um, some medium white. So it's not quite as white white. Maybe a half and half of each. You can dirty this with some of the other colors so it's not perfectly modeled here. There we go, that's pretty. A little warmer right up here as we build this light right here. Drag some of it across and just tap, tap. Let that fade away there. That's pretty nice. We put that other warmer back up here. Let's build that one again. Like that bit of warmth and then a touch of the light. You can add a little open medium. See, touch of the light there some light hits. Sometimes I'll just drag through and do that with it because that works pretty well. And let's pick up some more light, maybe a bit of open medium, maybe a bit of some of these other colors just to dirty it slightly because you can even have slightly cooler, a little bit of blue and stuff in there. Yeah, see it's slightly different than that warmth I just put on here. We'll grab some of that nice soft little color there and uh, some warm some yellow some open medium some of our medium white some of our yellow some open medium this is a pretty warm maybe a bit of our darulite into that this will be the bottom side of the clouds right here which will get that real evening glow to it here that we want this glow to start to happen as we get over there towards that. Now, this glow, maybe not quite as light, or not quite as much, so just light pressure with your brush, 
put a bit of it back up over here and that's a good thing and then um, over on the other side that's where you can get that that cooler violet and I won't even clean the yellow out of my brush because I want that yellow to tone some of this violet down here back up over here that's a little dark so we'll lighten that up a bit more it's a little more blue a little more dark here and uh, let's go just a touch lighter so it still looks like a cloud but see it's cooler so you have a light side and a cool side there to it here let's just blur some of that out there I like building clouds like this color let's pull this right on down maybe eclipse the top of that little hill there that little mountain back there maybe a touch more yellow drag that across a bit there we go and you can have that cooler little cloud right here the shadow so it's like this one is way back there and it's up higher actually so it's getting hit by the sun and these others here this other one here is actually on the shadow side there so you got a couple of different ways the clouds are hitting and you'll see that out in the evening sky you'll see all of that happening there now let's go over with some of this over to this side here soft soft and don't eliminate see I'm painting on kind of thin so I don't want to eliminate completely but I want to soften some of that then we'll take some of our warm medium white maybe a touch of our yellows here a little bit of the and we'll push some of that into that sky you don't want to you don't want to play too much with it because it'll go green on you so just a bit of that in there and uh, we could have which is really neat if you want depending on where that sun is so the sun is back behind there so you could actually and this is up to you but you will see it and you you know, you like I showed you, you know, uh, yesterday when I held up that photo, you do see the back sides. This is going to be too dark, but you do see the back sides of some of these other clouds that you can have up here because they're actually, you're looking at the shadow side of them. So we can soften some of that out there. And that might be a, a bit too purple for me. I might want to just lighten with a little light blue into that here and I'll put some yellows and stuff in there as well into some of those uh, clouds and some yellows maybe even a little bit of burnt sienna or something into them just pull some of that just so you hit that light there and that'll soften out some of those edges but you will pick up some of those cool colors there we might drag that just a bit more so it doesn't look like you're building another mountain there we'll just drag that across the sky here a bit dragging across the sky you know when you go out and you look at those evenings and morning skies you'll see the colors like that drag across the sky and so I'm going to take a little bit of this light blue and drag that again right across the sky here right across the sky pull down just a bit let some of those color bands though happen from that dirty brush right there there we go and I'm gonna rinse that color out of my brush because I got a lot of blue in it and I'm gonna go back to some of my warmer yellows let's go back maybe even a little yellow oxide right here and pull some of that in there. Yellow oxide is not as bright, more of the evening color there that you will see. Yeah, that will work. 
more of that evening color. And, you know, and you can look at some of these colors, you know, like here's another photo I got, just colors, and you can start, you know, so we could get, this is more evening than I want to do here. Um, so you're picking up more of the oranges as it goes from that yellows, it'll go into the oranges. And I don't really want to go too much more orange or anything, but I might increase my yellow, a soft light yellow up in there, Darulite yellow oxide and increase some of this and pull these bands through like that. So you see those bands of color coming through there. Don't forget to take that this way a bit. Let this go that way a bit. And it hits those, you know, here it's, it, it's hitting this side, wherever that, that sun is gonna be, you know, you're gonna, that's where you're gonna keep that light and then it'll hit the shadows after that. So we could, you know, hit a few other areas, like right across here like this, to make it look like it's hitting some of those clouds, just little spots there. And uh, that'll work. And maybe a bit more light right up in through here. Here like that. Now, I had the, the light of the, and this will dry down, so we have to look at that. And I got a, also here, so I, I wanna build a bit more light. Let's do that first, and then we'll go back to the sun. But I wanna build a bit more light right up here. This cloud right up here. So I just took my dirty yellow in my brush and started building that. Maybe a bit more white, just touches of it. Don't just touches of it through here. Don't don't make puffy white stuff. Just touches of it here, and maybe a, a bit of that pulling right here, like this. You know, this sun is going right behind this cloud a bit. We could actually even. When you do that with the sun and it's coming like that, that sun could also uh, be up here as a shadow. So you could also put a just a touch of some of your violets in there as a shadow there onto a cloud that's coming right there as well. So, you know, so it's here. So this would be a little bit of a shadow right through here on that. and. So you can see this, it just builds all kinds of nice stuff there. Now, I had, remember I showed you yesterday with that, you can take that off. Well, now that's dry. And so there's a couple ways in which you can do it. One is I use this all the time to clean my brushes, hand sanitizer. I don't like to use it thick like this. If I'm really going to do something, I usually use my bottle of alcohol, which isn't right here. So I'll use my hand sanitizer and see if this works. But it, uh, hand sanitizer is 60% alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol is the uh, chemical that you need to break the binder in an acrylic paint. And so I can I can put this in in, in uh, yeah, see, and it's taking it off here. I can put this in with um, paint, but I can take off some of that texture that I don't want to to be there and I'm going all the way back there as I'm working that right with the um, with the alcohol first now I can yeah, I can come back in I've taken off all that texture and I can hit a few things maybe a real light kind of glowy yellow right there and you know how much you put in this is all up to you you know grab yourself a good photo I I don't want to make this absolutely perfect I just want to uh, get the idea of this and I might end up darkening down around it a little bit more which is what you normally see to get this to show up more as a sun but what I don't want to do I want to paint the sun in here but what I don't want to do it is make it so distracting from the rest of the painting so I want to keep this kind of soft and blurry here and right up here by these edges let's take a little bit of the Smaller paint here, and smaller uh, a smaller brush and some yellow. We'll push that in. So we'll push some of this uh, 
this warmth that comes around it, maybe into it just a bit here as this warmth is all the way around this sun. Blur that edge just a bit. We'll see that uh, coming in there. Now to the bottom side, down over here is where you would have some more of your shadow. So this is just taking it, I'm not done, this is just taking it a little bit closer to uh, what my finished idea here will be for, you know, for this evening, this evening painting here. I'm not, I'm not right where I want to be, but I'm getting there. I want a little bit brighter orange. I'm going to a slightly bigger brush. A little bit brighter orange is my yellows. I'll do my two yellows here and a little bit of red here. And uh, see, that'll make that come out just a, a bit more there. And I want to blur that here. Blur this around just a bit. You know, normally you can't see the sun. It's too bright to look at. And I, but I don't want to paint that because I'll distract from the guys. But what I want to do is like this sun is going to be poking through some clouds here. So we'll build these up. Warms and cools there. Some misty kind of looks to the clouds as the sun is kind of misting through there. You know, and that's what you get, this kind of misty look through it, you know, that's coming through there. So we have a bit more to develop there, some of our lighter oranges, but we're going another step closer. That's what we want to do. Just another step closer here. That's a little too much. Getting close to it, though, but a little too much too fast. That's a little better. We'll pull that out. Some of those streaky, remember those nice horizontal color band lines going out there. And uh, yeah, and then, uh, and you know, and here, look at this. See how close, imagine, see how close this cloud is right here to this one right here. See how close that is, right? So you can see how dark that is. That's where this slightly darker, look at what, you know, look at your photos and stuff. And, and what do you see? That's the biggest thing. It's like, a, what do you actually see happening there? As this sun is going back down behind some of these edges of these clouds and stuff here. So we'll just soften some of that here and lighten, brighten up some more of the bands right here, right up to it. And I, you know, I may overstate some of these light bands here just so that it reduces the sun itself. In other words, it reduces the impact of it because where do I want that viewer? I want that viewer right here. I want them to notice this sun back there, but I don't want this sun to be the, I want this sun to be part of our painting, but not the focal part of our painting. That makes sense? I want it to be part of the painting though. I want it to be in here into the painting. Here. And just kind of blurred across a bit here. Worked at a few more times though. <laughs> and some bright, nice light, warm yellow right through here on the bottom sides. Here. There we go. That nice, bright, warm light. Here. I just love painting with the paper towel. Yeah, it just works. <laughs> Sometimes it just works. I'm going to put that brighter ring around this here. And then you come to a point, and 
and I'm going to be very serious with a lot of you, especially you beginners, you come to a point where you think, okay, now what's my next step? That's when I leave, <laughs> okay? I'll, I, I kind of know what I'm going to do there, but this is a good time what I'm going to do it and how I'm going to paint it. But this is a good time for me to leave because I've painted now on this area quite a bit for quite a long time. And it's a good time for me to move on now to another part of the painting. And uh, we're going to come back and put more yellow, more shadows, more lights and stuff there. But it's a good, a good time for me to go back now through some of the other parts of the painting and start adding some more and, uh, you know, some more interest and stuff. So I have some of these, those yellows and stuff that I want to travel down here now a bit more through some of these. And, you know, and like I said, before you get some of those... Um, you know, really, uh, those colors, you have to get it around the painting so that you you can see it. Because color affects color, simultaneous contrast, right? Color affects color. Color affects how you see things and stuff. So we have to get some of that around to some of these other areas here. Maybe a bit of that up over here. So that, uh, you know, and maybe right back here, just a nice little spot spot of it coming right through the back of that hill right back there it's just hitting that one um, but we have to get some of these other colors on here so we can see what our how our scene is coming so rather than playing and focusing too long on that uh, on that Sun and those clouds that I want to paint in there it's time to move on now, there would be, like right through here, there would be like a little bright edge, and, and you know, here, so you'll see that little bright edge, but I'm not going to quite do that yet. You know, I'll just show that in there. There's, so there's a lot more we still have to do, but not yet. I want to get some of that down in through here. I want to get a bit of that light in that orange into some more of the painting here, some verticals and some horizontals. Coming right back in through there, okay. Softer maybe, even a little bit of my violets here. Soft, just a bit. This will help the guy here. We'll carry that through here, like that. Some of those colors. So you got that real warm into the cools and we're just developing it again here. And it'll develop some of that through here. So this is what I, so I'll go back in there with like that cool. I'll come back with a little bit of the warmth. And it just puts on a little more paint, a little more movement, a little more interest. And uh, I don't want to, you know, completely paint on all my shadows. Because like I said to you before, shadows stay here nice and transparent. But we need in some of these areas a little bit more paint up into some of these areas. And um, I think what I'll do here, a little burnt sienna orange, just a touch of the blue here, is I think I will too much darken this just a bit, see what that's gonna be. Darken that just a bit here. Not too low. It's got to go to the low side here. Not to the top side, because the top side would be a lighter yellow, because the sun would be hitting it, but to the low side there. That's where that's got to be. Okay, so I have that. Now I want to build back up in here. A little bit too thin, a little bit, a little bit too much movement into the back for the horse to come forward. So we need to soften out in there. So any of our, any of these colors in here, just a softer light color that we will push through, that will contrast. Let's add a bit of the blue and burnt sienna, kind of a gray, pick up that little thing there. Grayish kind of color here. Could be a little yellow sometimes because of the warmth. Put a little more paint. See how the little more paint's just a little softer. It will soften the effect just a bit, see? 
but it's a nice so this gives you an idea here of some of the colors but I want to soften some of the calligraphy and so I'll soften the calligraphy and here and then we'll go work on our subjects here soften the, the calligraphy down see and that helps bring uh, the horse and stuff here a little farther forward so let's just soften down I could have some of those um, those nice uh, Hereford colors in there. This Herefords are back behind there. But, uh, so, and, you know, pull, push, and move that over. But see how that, see how that softens it out. It's like we did there. So, and I'll look for those kinds of areas around here. Very important. Like, I want this cow face to come forward so the shadow will be there. But I got too, a little too much movement there. So I'll soften that with some of this color any kind of color that's very similar there. Soften some of that calligraphy, and then that'll bring the cow a little farther forward. Now you can leave light, like I can leave a spot of light. Matter of fact, maybe even I'll, I'll light up. But you want the calligraphy, the brush movement, the calligraphy of your brush to soften out just a bit. Let's even leave a little light right there coming through. So it's kind of like the sunlight is kind of coming through there, see? And, but you, you don't want to, sometimes when you paint, you know, you paint like this, you get a lot of movement. We like that. And, but as we develop the painting, we'll slowly soften that down. See, so we'll slowly soften. We'll put a little bit of that light right through here. Look for some of that, those movements and stuff in that area, see? And... So we can even take a bit of this nice light right back up in here. But the calligraphy itself, the thinness of the color, will soften out a bit here. And so it'll help push it forward. So uh, it'll help push everything else forward. So I might take, if I'm developing that Hereford color back here, I might add a little bit clearer of a Hereford color there. Maybe, uh, you know, I did those shadows with that burnt sienna and blue, sometimes a little violet and green here. So I may just soften that. So a bit here, just pull down a bit. Maybe it's, uh, you know, I when I'm going into the very back here like this, I'll blur it slightly, but the actual light dark calligraphy of colors changes. If that makes sense. I don't. Uh, I don't um, leave those. And this would be a good place for a dark. That would really pop this horse's head forward here. So, it's, I, like I said yesterday, it's the planning of your colors, what you're doing. Let's get that just a touch darker here. And maybe right in here, which will get a good dark that's going to bring our horse forward here. And just some movement here, right up in there like that. See? So you can see it coming forward. And it's just the planning that you do. And most of it is, you know, I've got all this lovely brush movement. And we start out with that brush movement. We want that brush movement. And then we slowly start softening it out. Like I'm gonna leave a little dark right there against that little cow's head there. And that's really gonna pop him forward. See how it pops him forward. So we start out with all this and then we'll, we will, uh, you know, adjust it just a bit. The calligraphy and stuff for what we need here, okay? And, and that really works. So maybe over here I'll take this just a bit thinner and I'll push some of it in over here, some of this dark and shadow here. And see, that's gonna bring this horse's rump and stuff, and this is where other cows, other colors, and stuff like that are gonna go back there, like other cows, which is what I'll have. And I'll use these colors sometimes to help shape up some of my cows that I'll have up here in the front. So, and so, what I, what I really like to call this a lot, and, and you've seen me in um, 
do this with florals. I've talked to you about this before with florals, and it's a technique that I do in florals that I actually learned in Westerns, and it's a what I call a push-pull. And what I am is pushing some things back, pulling some things forward by the reaction, the simultaneous color reaction of one color hitting against another or an edge. See, I can blur this edge right back here. And if I want this edge of this horse to recede, maybe I'll take some of my gray and my warmth and stuff. But as I start to paint this horse's edge, this rump of this horse here, what I'll do is I'll blur those colors in together there and the edge of that horse's rump starts to recede. Do you see that? Now maybe I want this chest right here to advance, which is what I'm gonna want. So now as I pick up my light here, I will come in and I will do more of what we call the found edge here of the light here onto the horse. And so you can see the found edge and here, as I push these two colors together, and you could use a brush or your finger, you'll see I'll create the lost edge and the found edge here as I maybe even get just a touch of white into this as well. As I push that edge forward right there onto that horse, here where that big muscle's gonna be, here, it really comes forward. So I have a found edge and a lost edge as I develop that uh, particular part of the horse. And that's one of the things that I'll be looking forward. So maybe I want to take a, maybe a bit of violet. Well, let's see, sun's hitting here. No, it would be warm. Sun's down pretty low. It's gonna hit here. It's gonna be lighter warm. Let's just put a bit of our medium white, maybe mostly our medium white, with just a touch of yellow here. And let's get that angle in here. Right, that, that horse's neck in there. I've got, it, uh, got it a little too much triangle shape here. This needs to come back just a bit more. And, you know, you'll have, those of you that, um, if you're not used to drawing horses and doing that stuff, then you can, I'll put this for the members, I'll put a line drawing of this particular horse that I did here for you. There we go. That's a little bit better on him, better, bit better shape on him. Here, his, this muscle could come out just a bit more right here. That one before it goes down into this one here. But you see, I get that those edges there, and now that horse is, you know, coming a little bit more forward. And uh, we're going to want that right back in here. We'll put his mane and stuff here. Give him some more interest. We'll fold his mane that way there. And so it's the edges. And so this is what I do. So I'm defining this, working through this back area. This now allows me to come up in through here and I'll start to develop. I'm basically going to go around through all these other colors again here. So, and, and I'll make some quicker statements here. A nice little um, and I, I do like that done with a little bit of green in that, but a nice shadow part of that done right here. This horse will come right here. Let's streak a bit more of that onto his tail there. That'll bring that forward, but you can start refining some of these areas a bit more. This time, let's get that shadow here. Give him his knobby knee, but I still leave some of those edges like when you're painting a sunset or you're painting anything here, you don't want those edges absolutely perfect. I like to blur them out a little bit. That gives them a little bit more of a realism. If you come in, we're, we're quite a bit away from it. And I don't care what the photo shows or anything. You're an artist and you're painting an effect. And one of the effects is, you know, the lost to found edges that you see there. So we want to be able to... Uh, to keep that so some edges will go a little more found and then we'll blur up a little bit use just the tip of the brush get down here towards his fetlock maybe and just kind of brush it a little bit blur it out a bit you know so that uh, it is not absolutely a perfect shape there and I need to uh, widen this part it's going to cover by his oh, needs a bit more lighter done color a little green a little burnt sienna that's a pretty color right there let some of that green come out here see 
onto some of that. That's a pretty color coming on him. Let's get up just a touch of that medium white. Medium white's a good one to add to our palette now. It works with these done colors pretty nice. Get a little bit of light coming through there. Some of his light color. And brush mix, some of that green, burnt sienna, some of these colors right in here. It's, you know, it's like a a good a good dirty brush painter. I always said a good artist is a dirty artist, dirty brush artist because we use these colors. Let's take some of this, a little bit of this, lighten this up about a value six or so here. And some of these, maybe a bit of that orange and greens. That's pretty. And I'll see I'm dry brushing this. See this? It's dry brushing. I'll come right up to those yellows. I'll put some of those yellows back. Good artist is gonna do this several times. <laughs> We'll pick up that lower leg muscle here, right before it goes here to that, to his, to his knee, basically, um, here. And he's got the done, so he's gonna be darker down at that base there. So we'll take a, maybe even a little violet, cause it's, remember a violet on your cool side. What colors do you use on your cool side? Maybe some of this, burnt sienna blue violet kind of color here and we'll um, kind of draw out a bit more of his like this could have a little bit more of a founding edge here found edge coming up his leg here there like that and here's this is coming down through there that's not too bad maybe a bit of that violet this might be a bit. I might need to bring that chest back down just a touch there. But you'll have a little bit of dun color in there. That's what you want. That See, that's what you want. That blurring of the color right down in there. And let's get some of this right down here. And I'll blur some of this out. You know, blur some of those shapes out. We might even uh, put a bit of that light kind of touched color up in here. This is just our second look. We're gonna do it about two more times so before we get up there to a, to the right look that we wanna have. That, his leg's standing kind of out, kind of crooked there. So let's just move this over just a bit here. Like that is coming back down this way change this out a bit these are all things that I start to notice and I'll start to correct the drawing this is one thing that you know for all of you even though you know we you know I show you all different kinds of ways to uh, to do things you know to transfer patterns put things on you do want to you do want to learn some of your drawing skills. So if you have to change something during the painting, something, something is not presenting itself correctly, something you have to change something, you can do it. So drawing is something that you work on, that you will always work on. Let's give him back more of a knee there. There we go. And uh, we'll take a bit of that blue and burnt sienna, nice dark here. And uh, give up bit more of his tail, maybe a bit of raw sienna in there too, burnt sienna in there, just get a little bit of that, well, just the idea of that, and uh, let's, I'm going to build, so I got this, this beautiful dun color here, the green, the burnt sienna, maybe a little, some of this, you know, kind of greens that up a bit more. Maybe a bit of the lighter um, medium white here. And let's just build this color. And see, when I when I really paint the horse, I'll do it several times, like I say here, several times here to uh, get the colors and get him and stuff to the value that I want. So I'll work back and forth between the the horse here and the other horse getting the colors and you know so sometimes you'll see me and I'll drag those edges see drag those edges so they're not perfect 
blur some of those edges. It's not perfect here. You know, I'm not going to take a liner brush and make his tail. I don't want to do that. I want this to be a painting. This is not a photograph. So I don't want it to get too real looking by too much, uh, too much, um, you know, perfect strokes. A little more green to that. These are all beautiful done colors here. Work that. I put that on just a little too much burnt sienna. So I'll work some different marks here into that. Don't take away all that burnt sienna, but see all the color movements that you start to get in there. That's what I'm looking for. Now he'll have um, another big shadow here from this back, from this hip muscle that comes up through here. Big lump muscle there. That'll come up. And let's get a bit more of that shadowy dun blue, green, burnt sienna here. Beautiful color. Nice shadow tone right in there. Little violet works because the violet is the, the shadow there, right? And um, Let's lighten up just a bit and then we'll darken it back up again. Right in here into his belly. Right in here, the round part. There. And then we'll add some of that shadow through there. We're running that up. But, and so I'm gonna start leaving still some calligraphy up and through here that I wanna leave to, that helps give his shape there. And um, maybe just a bit lighter so we can see the part of his leg there. Oops, too far down into his done markings. But see, I, I, I'll put it on and blur it down and take uh, little strokes, marks here, sometimes blurring those edges and stuff here because I don't want it perfect. But you can see now, as I'm doing this, more and more definition is coming to the horse. We can have a bit more definition right out here to him. Maybe the round part of his head here. That'll stick out that way. And uh, he'll have a kind of lost them when I did that other part there. So we'll just give the impression here of some ears. There, like that. that was, that's all he really needs over there. And I'll work these again, just like this. Okay, another time. Work those colors, build this up. This, this area here and this front shoulder and this area here and this cow here are where I'm gonna really work to put this, this crescent shape of coming forward this guy here too so it's going to go like this this is going to be my crescent shape that's going to come forward so i really want to work like uh here some of these greens some of these colors on this rump here of this horse see i'll push in a little bit more right into some of that paint some of it out put some of it back and a bit more. I don't think I'll go lighter than medium white, so I'll just stay into the medium white. But we're on the shadow side, so I should probably, if I want to be correct, push a bit of that lighter color, maybe a gray violet, into that as well. So that cools it. Yeah, that's a pretty color. That works. It's a little cooler. It's light, but cooler. Get that violet in there. It never lets you down. And don't forget, we can put, like I mentioned yesterday, we can put some of that cooler blue back up in here as well. So we'll do that as well back up here. But this just takes time. This is, this is the time-consuming part of the painting where I'm going to do this. Work these colors. Now, when you look up in here, you'll see all these colors and stuff like that traveling up and through there. And that's what I'm building for. That's what I'm looking for. And I'll take some yellows, some of my duns here, color here, a little bit of the reds and yellows here. Make this other kind of maybe a little warmer. 
And see, I'll start adding some of these as what we call little half tones between that light and shadow there. See? And that puts just a little bit of that warmth yellow right through here. Now I'll build back up my light shine here. But I'm going to build that. And then I'm going to go do the same thing through the horse here. Is building some of that. Now I want some additional shadow. Shadow violet right in here to help round this, this back leg here. That's going to come in. Maybe just a touch of that lighter violet worked right there. Follow the shape, the calligraphy of the horse, the, the muscle, muscle structure of the horse. And um, you can see that. I've talked to you in other videos about that. Maybe I have just a little more violet. Sometimes I'll bring out, especially I'm on the shadow side here, so I'll bring out a muscular, muscular, a muscular, <laughs> a mus a muscle structure here by by using, you know, like here, like the shape of a violet or something like that. He has a big strong muscle pulling down right here. And see that's a good that's a good violet color because it's different than what is used otherwise into the horse there, see? And so and then I can take some of that violet right up into some of my other done colors here. And re and add again that shape of, you know that, and I'll take some of that out with other dun colors, but the violet will help it stay cool and on that shadow side. So you got a cool going to a warm over here, and you know sometimes what I'll do, well I'll do this many times is so I'll put that on and like that violet's a little big, so I'll take some of it down with just a a light touch of a warmth color right in there to take that back. Now that, all of that is called broken color. And broken color is what really makes your western or your landscape or anything. Putting all the colors into the clouds, working on the horses here to bring them all forward. That's broken color. And that broken color, you'll see me reference this in so many other videos. Broken color. What is really broken color? Broken color is working through the hues of your color wheel. In other words, the reds to greens to blues to yellows. But they all obtain about the same value and the same basic tone. They can they can be a little bit brighter, a little bit duller, but they're you're basically working the colors. Like thinking of a rainbow. Rainbow's nice and bright, and then the colors just change through it. That's what you want to do with broken color. So this is broken color up through here. Yes, that's shadow, but see right in through here. Take out that shadow. See that across the horse's rump right there. See all the different colors that are happening there. That's broken color. And broken color takes time. Many times you're hitting it. And not always overpainting everything that you do. It takes time to build that. So I'm going to come through. I'm going to work them again. And I'm going to work this horse up here. I'll show you some, some video clips along the way and uh, about how I'm going to do the broken color. And then we'll come back. And I'll show you some painting of the cows, and then we'll work on some details of the horsemen and stuff. But we've got a little bit more going on back there. This is a, this dried a little too dark, so I'll be fixing that as well, okay? And I'll show you a few clips of it, because we don't want this to turn into a seven-hour video. It's what it's going to take me to paint this, about six or seven hours, really, to paint the job that I want to do on this painting. So, okay, all right. And so I'll show you the clips. We'll work broken color onto our white horse. Thank you.